Hi, today I'm going to show you how to track rental income for multiple units. Um, so let's say you have um, a small strip mall or maybe a multifamily house. You would really want to set this up the right way in the beginning because later you might do a rent roll or need to give something to a bank and they're gonna to wanna to see how much um, you're actually collecting per unit. So there's a couple of things to know that once you know it, uh, if you start out in the beginning, you'll be set for the future. So what I'm doing is I'm going to the chart of accounts and I'm just gonna pretend there's three tenants and then you could continue on and on and on. And this could get very complicated, but let's pretend you have one LLC and it's a multifamily unit house and so just remember, if you have, for every LLC, you should have a QuickBooks file. Okay, so first we'll make a parent account for rental income, okay? And then you're gonna make three sub accounts. We'll call this apartment number one. I'm just gonna keep doing that. three. Okay, so now you have right here, you have rental income, and then you have your three units. So let's say you're going to, um, if for instance, they just give you a check every month, all you would have to do is go here. Let's say today's the first, that's when people are supposed to pay their rent. Let's say they gave you $1,500. You could also scan the copy of the check here. And you could do. Let's say they're different sizes. Okay. Okay, so let's run the profit and loss for today and I'll show you how it shows up. Once again, this is a demo file. I mean, there's nothing really on this file. It's just for instruction. Okay, so now you can see you have one, two and three and your total collected for this, let's say an LLC is $6,000. And if you had done this, you know, every month, you could run a report, you know, like this, and you would do it by months. And it would basically give you a rent roll that would be great for um, a bank or, you know, for any of your management purposes. And you would see if there were holes in it. Like if you didn't, let's say, for instance, in this, we would say, okay, well, we just started the property. So, you know, um, this was the first month of operation. But if, you had all of this detail each month and you'll spot holes. Maybe the tenant didn't pay, um, but this way, it's really good to start it out this way in the beginning, instead of just throwing everything to rental income and then someone whom you really need to, you know, like your financials wants more detail. Now you have to go back. So it's better to just start this from the beginning. So you don't have to, um, you know, go recode everything after an entire year. It's better to set it up right the first time. There was one other thing in, you may um, send invoices or want to track who's paying. You could end up having maybe 20 units um, for one LLC if you're, you have an apartment building. Like, so I've had helped people that aren't using, I mean, I really recommend using some sort of program to track your units, but sometimes the price of some of those, that software is really high. So how could you track it in QuickBooks? What I would say is have um, QuickBooks make auto invoices for the time period of the lease term. Okay, so the first thing before you could make invoices is we need to have these 
items. Let me show you what I mean. Go to the gear item and you make click to products and services. And we're going to do apartment. And this is why you have to do your chart of accounts first. Apartment number one links to apartment number one here. Okay, so I'm going to do this three times. It's really important you link these correctly or all your reports will be wrong, okay? Okay, so we have one, two, three. These were made by, you know, just QuickBooks. Okay, so then you would go to sales. And you're gonna say, we'll just call it to keep it easy. We'll say um, tenant number one, just to keep it easy. So tenant number one, we can create an invoice. Let's back it to like October or November. November 1st, apartment number one. And then let's say, I don't remember what I made it before, but let's say it's a thousand dollars. Okay, here you go. Let's say you have a one month lease. You could make this recurring to schedule on the first day of the month. You can even have it where it immediately sends an email and you could also sign up for QuickBooks payments. You could do the credit card, you pay a discount, the bank transfer, I think it takes forever for you to get the money, but it's 50 cents or a dollar. They keep changing everything, but one of my clients does this with her tenants. So it's for, let's say they're gonna do it for a year starting October 1st. And the end is after 12 occurrences. So you have to still keep a list of when your, um, you know, when your leases are expiring, you need a, an expiring lease list. Okay, so I'll just send this to myself. And you can blind copy yourself here so that you know that these go out, you know, on the first of the month, okay? So this is just mainly, if you're, I mean, tenants, my tenant knows, she knows when she's supposed to pay, right? I do not send or waste time billing. But if you have multiple tenants and it's hard to keep track of who's paying, who isn't, then you could decide to send this to them or if it could just be for your internal use, then you wouldn't email it to them or automatically send that. You would just have it automatically generate inside your QuickBooks. Okay, so I save the template. Oh, I can't start it before today. Okay, so let's say today for 12 months. So, of course it didn't work. Well, I mean, it's, it's not gonna start, I think, till next month. So I can say use here for today's date. And this is what it looks like. It would say from you, whatever your LLC is. And then if you had it, um, you know, set to uh, pay, they could actually click a pay now button. And I think it also takes like Apple Pay. Oh, I guess they, they used to have PayPal, but I guess they don't now. And you would see, I don't have these turned on because it's a demo file, but it does not have the ability to add the 3% that you get charged. So just saying, okay, so you send that out. And then what happens, and I'm not going to make an invoice for each tenant, just go back and watch this. You know, you set up the customer. We have the item set up. We have the item connected to its own distinct chart of account code. And now you can run a report which will show tenant number one has $1,000 in current because I made it as of today. So um, I think this is something, especially if you're just starting out or getting ready to do a new set of books for 2021, and you'll be watching this years later, but if 
if you're setting up to do something in January or a new cleaner set of books, or you, you feel maybe you want to just, you have an existing QuickBooks file, but you want to have more use out of it. This is a great way to start. Start by telling what you're spending, um, you know, like where your rent roll is in, in regards to income. Um, I'll make another video regarding how to track. Once in a while, we have more than one um, property under the same LLC. So then we use class tracking in that case. Um, but if it's in really like one building, we don't need to decipher. I think it's kind of a waste of money to try and like break out expenses by the three different units. You could, then again, we would use class tracking. Um, so I hope you found this helpful. Um, please don't forget to like or subscribe if you like these types of videos. And if you put um, your comments of other things you would like to learn or questions you have regarding something you can't seem to figure out um, on QuickBooks Online, send me a message and I will either send you a message back or try and make a video to explain um, where you're getting stuck. All right. Thanks.